episode of the day and on this particular episode we are talking about the q a that lucy natasha and her husband uh recently did they posted a video and it's going by jenkins <laughs> that particular video is going by jenkins it's over a hundred thousand so i was very interested to see what exactly was the questions that were being asked and we're going to look at uh, those questions but i will focus a lot more on certain questions i'm going to focus particularly on question number five and question number seven but i will then also highlight about four other questions out of the 13th questions that were actually asked and i'm going to talk about the crowd reaction as these questions are asked and i'm going to talk about a small little thing that i think or i believe is going on with this particular video it's actually show the daily christian commentary videos and do check out the later on updates episodes down in the pinned comments and there might be a live stream later on and so let me keep this video very short this particular q a was a bit ridiculous for me and i will tell you why on based on the questions okay let's be realistic here so these people got got engaged last year december november into december and right now they just got their their first wedding done i don't know if they're going to do their second and so the first question that they were asked was how did you meet now we had already gotten that question previously what things uh, do you do you like about each other okay and then the, the next question which is question number three was when uh, can we expect the first baby and then they asked kamel uh, what is his favorite food pres uh, presently in kenya the next question was present question number five i'm gonna come back to that one then they asked him uh, how many kids do you do, do they want they asked them this particular question question number seven i'm gonna come back to that question they asked the first silly question which was uh, what's the what's lucy natasha's biggest weakness and i was like what i'll come back to that and question number nine was something we don't know about uh, the two of them like there's something that they they do between the two of them but what, which is not public the next question was what swahili words does kamel know presently since he's from uh, india residing in the in canada and the next question which was the second silly question was what names do they call each other in private okay we know it so what <laughs> but the second silly third silly question was who is the better kisa mm -hmm. very high school type of <laughs> juvenile kind of question uh, uh question number 13 was what drives the both of them what drives lucy natasha crazy about Kamel? now that was another that was the fourth silly question that i so these were the questions that were asked so those were the silly ones now let me address the silly ones before i get to the questions that really kind of baffled me that they were even asked uh, which is what names do they call each other in private why do you why does that information do you understand like why like what is their biggest weakness why so that other people can take advantage of it why what's the point why do you want to tell us your biggest weakness that's a very weird question what drives you crazy about this person to say what should other people see into this relationship like other women what should they see in kamel i don't get it who is the better kisser like do you even expect to get that answer yeah, so this is what their fans ask them uh how was their honeymoon based on the pictures that they saw on instagram okay so all the pictures that were going out there how, how was the honeymoon how did that actually buff up the uh, the entire so this narrative of the love love birds narrative has caught this bug on this followers to a point that they want to know the details about other people's honeymoon i thought that was very interesting that the facade like when the camera is on right and they are busy playing this you know we want to kiss oh we are <laughs> in front of the camera and whatnot and so they they've seen so much into that that they want to know the details of how the honeymoon was i thought that was very weird you people have very weird followers question number seven was a red flag for me it wasn't a question that i was like oh wow interesting question no or even silly question no this question showed you that that question number five 
has really burned a certain type of an image at the back of their mind. The question was, how do you keep the fire burning between the two of you? These people just got married. Now, even though they were just dating and they might have been together for a year, but they've never lived together long enough. They have not only lived together maybe for the last two or three months. And the question is, how do you keep the fire burning? How? <laughs> how is that question coming to people that have just started staying together? How is that question relatable towards a, a couple that just recently started? But it's because they are selling the love story. Do you understand? And this video really follows the narrative of what we spoke about, how they are selling the Instagram life to their followers okay on the previous episode this really follows that narrative is that the pictures are telling them that hey man your, your relationship is might be in rats even though their relationship your relationship might have been there for the past three years but you are seeing a relationship that just started <laughs> and it's making you feel at odds to a point of you want to know how do they keep the fire they just started staying together what kind of a facade are people under when they feel like a relationship that started yesterday? And I'm not speaking down on the relationship. Guys, let's be realistic. These people just started living together. Okay? What kind of advice about how to keep the fire burning? What kind of answers do you expect to get? These people are still love beds, love beds. <laughs> Ask them in five years. Okay? Ask them in five years, how do you keep the fire burning? Why? Because these people haven't gone through. Why do people think they're going to get something out of this relationship? It's because of that first question. Question number five. How was the honeymoon? It's because they have been sold a love story. They've been sold, oh, this relationship is so wonderful. Super, super, super wonderful. So it makes people discredit whatever they might have. So in desire to that. And so as they are desiring towards this relationship, they feel like there is fire here, man. There is fire that reignite yours. Okay? These people just started. They, even if they are giving you advice, the advice is still baby advice. It still needs maturity. It still needs to mature. It doesn't mean that they won't say something that might be beneficial. No, but why does the question come to them? People are seeing, but they are seeing the wrong kind of message. They are seeing a successful relationship out of a relationship that just literally started like yesterday. Like yesterday. This relationship is not even four months old. Like, okay, they have been dating, yes. For however long they might have been dating, yes. But they are only recently married. They haven't even faced anything. And you are asking advice about how to keep the fire burning in your relationship from these people. Now, bear in mind, I'm going to go back to that particular point. I'm not saying they can't give that advice. Yes, you can give advice because we've been here on earth long enough to have had experiences to know what is loving to the other person. But what kind of advice? I can see why a person who's a follower might hear me wrongly here. They might hear it as if, okay, so you're saying that you are capable of giving advice, but they can't. You are hearing the wrong thing. <laughs> you are hearing the completely wrong thing, if that's what you are hearing. Okay? What I'm relating here is that there is something that they have shown. There is something that they have displayed that makes a person feel like, if only I have that, I'll keep the fire burning. They feel like something between these two people has been going on. You see, when a relationship just starts, you are, you are praying that they grow together. You are praying that they mature together. I'm not asking relationship advice from you. The relationships have started. That's why I'm saying, if you think I'm saying they can't give advice, you are hearing the wrong thing. I'm saying, when people start their relationship, your prayers are that their relationships go stronger and stronger and matures. I'm not asking advice from them. <laughs> why? They haven't gone through it in order for them to be capable to give me advice. Not that their advice will be irrelevant. No, but what is it that they have particularly shown that makes people see successful relationships?
channel to do daily Christian commentary videos. I thought this was worth mentioning, particularly for those people that just buy into everything that these people actually uh, sell them, which is hopes and dreams which are far from reality. Subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of commentary, and I'll do see you later on. If there's a live stream, it will be down at six o'clock later on. I'll be blessed.